What is up guys, it is Nick, and we are back to break down the Sunday DFS slate between the New England Patriots and the Detroit Lions. So I'll have some action on this. Uh, well, let's hold on. Let me let me pause. Let me say this first. This game, I have to do okay on the main slate. If I don't do it good on the main slate, I probably will not do it. I'll save my money. But if I win on the main slate and we have a fairly nice day, I'll, uh, I'll go ahead and throw some money at this slate. I'm going to this game. There is a there is a mosquito in my room. That's that's up there on the things you hate to see. But uh, I'm going to this game. Um, I got it as a birthday gift tickets to this game. Uh, they're on the visitor side, so if you didn't know, I'm a Patriots fan. But they're on the visitor side, and they're three rows up around the 50 yard line. So I'm really stoked uh, for this game. So. Um, have done actual research for this because I probably will bet the Patriots spread as long as I believe it's at six and a half currently. Um, I assume if it stays six and a half, I'll bet it tomorrow. Um, I haven't bet it yet. I've been kind of holding off, uh, especially if I crush my bets today, which I am a Washington and Washington and San Diego State just win. They just have to win. They don't have to cover spread or anything away from having a plus 10 unit day let me check the Patriots spread right now uh, so those Patriots did go up to minus seven um, they're minus 103 on the minus seven so I might actually take the opportunity to bet that because um, I believe they were minus six and a half at like minus 115 or minus 120 so wanted no part of that but Let's get into the DFS aspect. So the Patriots are minus seven. We're expecting a lot of points in this. Uh, let me get the over under uh, for purposes. Make sure I have the accurate over under for this. So the over under is set at 54 and a half. So high scoring game expected here in Detroit in the Dome. Tom Brady in the Domes have been has been lights out as a player in his career. And so he's one of my favorite plays, and he'll be my MVP on both sites. Now, obviously, you can run naked Brady, um, and obviously higher upside play potentially is to go with one of the receivers. It gives you a higher upside with, uh, we'll talk about it if we take Brady out. But we'll start by building over here on FanDuel, and uh, we'll have Brady in to start it out. Uh, we also have Matt Stafford at 15-5. If you plop him in... Gives you only 9k per player remaining, which is a plenty amount uh, remaining. So I like the dual quarterback, as always, um, for this. There are plenty of values down here. Uh, let me see. Certain player that I'm looking for. The kickers are priced up at 10 and 9.5. Uh, I don't think Josh Gordon is going to play his full complements of snaps. Uh, so I'm probably not going to play him this week. Um, I do like Josh Gordon, but it is uh, it's a little bit dicey. And so with Josh Gordon playing probably around 40 to 60% of the snaps, it limits my interest on all the Patriots pass catchers. I actually have more interest in the the Lions pass catchers. you got Kenny Galladay, Marvin Jones, and Golden Tate. Uh, they're all above this 9K which was why it makes it kind of hard to fit everybody you want in. But there are some options down here. Um, Theo Riddick is one in a game that they should be trailing. I think Theo Riddick is an interesting play here. Now the receptions are a little bit of an issue over here on FanDuel just based on how things work. Because it's half point PPR, it really does limit... It limits your... What am I trying to say? It limits some of your upside with the catch with the pass catching running backs. So with 9K left, I'm actually going to pop Matt Stafford out. It gives us 10K remaining, which is still it's still a tight budget. But in a high scoring game, I'm gonna go ahead and put Matt Prater in. The Patriots are a bend don't break defense, so at 9-5, he gives you a nice upside. Over here on FanDuel, I'm never a fan of playing cash games for the showdown slates. I just don't like... I feel like the edge is a little bit taken away because of how the MVP spot works over here. It doesn't multiply how much the player costs. So I think it takes away some of the edge. 
Uh, the next player that I want to talk about is Kenny Galladay. Looks like he has um, kind of taken over from Marvin Jones as the number two wide receiver. And so I like Kenny Galladay and Golden Tate in my lineups this week. Um, I think they should see good action. It's a good way to get exposure to Matt Stafford without having to play him. Um, I think they have some decent touchdown equity as well as Golden Tate has seen, is it 13 targets per game to start the season? Yeah, 13 and 15 targets to start the season. One of the higher target market shares in all the NFL. And with that left, you could try to you, you could try with one of these punt plays in LeGarrette Blunt or Cadero Patterson. Or what you could do is you could come off uh, Golden Tate, go to my theoretic play at 8K, and uh, you could look at a Chris Hogan or a Marvin Jones. You could go Marvin Jones and hope that uh, the Patriots go with their normal strategy of take away the number one option. Looks like Golden Tate's that number one option. So if they go ahead and take it away and it turns into a shootout, you've got the... If the Patriots take away Golden Tate, and Golden Tate will say gets limited to five receptions or something like that, five targets, and these are the lion share. These would be the lion share of the targets. These five guys or these three guys right here, and the Patriots do their bend don't break. Prater should kick some few extra, kick some field goals um, when they're stuffed without getting in the end zone. You get exposure to Matt Stafford without having to play Matt Stafford, and if the Patriots do their normal game flow of keeping you out of the end zone, um, I think, you know, or taking out your best target and keeping you out of the end zone, I think this is the high upside play for um, the four uh, Lions players. And then Brady gives you the Patriots exposure uh, without having to pay up for Gronk. So moving over here to the DraftKings side of things, where we have the double priced for the captain slot, I don't think you can play Brady or Stafford over here unless you want to go massive dumpster diving. So you could play Prater over here. I still like Prater over here, so I'd probably play him, but it only leaves you 7,000 salary remaining. You'd have to look down, and there's not a lot of cheap guys over here for you to look at. Abdul, healthy scratches. Uh, Dwayne Allen doesn't get involved in the passing game, really. He's just, like, the extreme top uh tight end run blocker for the Patriots. He, they've turned him into a premier, premier run blocking uh, tight end. Um, I would say you could try some other stuff down here, but there's not really any. I can't really advise that. Uh, Theoretic over here on the PPR site at 5,200 is a very fair price. Um, I really like him over here. He should see uh, a high amount of workload if this game goes as expected and even if it doesn't he does have a nice market share of receptions um, and so I think he'll be heavily involved moving on Josh Gordon at 6600 over here is very tempting I'll have to see as you can see I'm recording this at 12 a.m. on September 23rd, so it's Sunday, but I'm recording this before we get actives and inactives and all that type of news, uh, and we haven't heard the final go on Josh Gordon yet. We'll go ahead, and for the sake of this video, we'll go ahead and throw Josh Gordon in there. Um, he'll have an opportunity, I think, even if he doesn't play a full complement of snaps, to get a nice run in this game, and it brings you up to 87.75 remaining for your players, and it pretty much opens up for anybody you want, so... Golden Tate, I can put in there. I really like Golden Tate. He's actually in my shell lineup for the Thursday through Monday slate, and I think he might actually stick around in that lineup. Uh, so that should tell you how much I do like Golden Tate, especially on PPR sites. I think you get some high PPR upside here with Theo Riddick and Golden Tate. Uh, and it leaves you 8,900. You can go ahead and slot in Kenny, Kenny Galladay if you want. Uh, is there a pay up? There is a pay up from Prater. But I actually think Prater is a better play than LeGarrette Blunt, so I'm going to be doing that. I don't have a whole lot of interest in the defenses. While I do like the defenses on slowdown slates, I'm not sure they'll, they're will they very viable in this one. I think it's a high-scoring game, uh, but I really like them. Let's talk about if you do not put Brady into the flex. This opens up a lot more for you. So I already expressed my love for Golden Tate, so let's go ahead and put him into the captain slot with the boosted um with the boosted price uh, for the boosted points. So it brings him up to 129. 
Uh, if we put in our boy Prater, I think Prater is my favorite salary saver on both sites. Uh, he's just got a nice price, and I think the Patriots will force them into a couple of field goals. So I do, I do like Matt Prater. Um, if we lock in Theo Riddick as well, uh, it brings about us up to 9-6 for the remaining three players. Um, and that means we could forego a play like Josh Gordon. Uh, if we went down here to Marvin Jones, that brings us up, brings us up to 10-9-5. And we could go with Brady. Actually, we'd have to step down from... Marvin Jones. So if we went, I won't put Josh Gordon in here, or I'll put Josh Gordon in here, but if Josh Gordon is somehow active, you could go with the full Pat stack of Gordon, Brady, and Gronk. If, I'm not sure if Josh Gordon or Chris Hogan would get Darius Slay. I'm not quite sure how the Lions would view Josh Gordon since it's week one. I, we don't really know if Josh Gordon will be viewed as the Patriots' number one wide receiver or number two wide receiver. For the sake of this lineup build, we'll assume Josh Gordon is viewed as the number two, and Slay is on, um, Darius Slay is on Chris Hogan. So you slot, uh, Josh Gordon in there, you get a nice little Patriots stack here, you get Gronk in there. Gronk, uh, coming off a week where he was the tight end two, has rebounded to be a tight end one all but one week. The last week he failed to do that, I believe, was all the way back in 2013, um, I'm talking off the top of my head. It's either 2011 or 2013, which is the last time that uh, he failed to come off a week which he was a tight end two or worse and not be a tight end one. Uh, so I do really, really like Rob Gronkowski this week. But uh, that's going to do it. Uh, obviously don't know exactly what I'm going to be playing for the showdown slate if I happen to play. Uh like always, these aren't like lineups that I'm telling you to go plug and play. It's more of a thought process that I'm trying to walk you through um, and, and tell you about the plays that I really like. Uh, I probably won't be playing like a Chris Hogan on this slate. I do always love James White, um, and he's a nice pivot off of Josh Gordon if Gordon isn't able to go. I won't be playing any Burkhead. Probably won't touch the running back scenario in Detroit other than Theo Riddick. If Josh Gordon is out, I'll probably be all in on my boy Philip Dorsett. I, I love Dorsett. Um, seven targets in each of the first two games. If he is out, I'm, I'm probably locking in Philip Dorsett. Um, I don't think I can play either of the defenses. There is something to be said about a correlation play between the Patriots defense and Cordero Patterson, but I don't think I'll go there personally. And there's also some merit to just punting this all together down here, just taking a guy like Dwayne Allen and hoping maybe he'll catch a ball. Um, you're, you're hoping, you know, obviously he's going to take a zero probably, but you're just hoping that that extra 600 in salary from a Dwayne Allen uh, that bumps you up here if you play Prater. Let's throw Prater in there. Gives you 11-6 per player. It really opens up things for you. And then you're just hoping that uh, you play the guys that go crazy. And there's no other way that you could have put them in except for to have some just absolute punt. But yeah, guys, that's going to do it for this. I hope you all enjoyed. Drop a like if you did. Subscribe if you haven't. Check back later today. Um, we'll have the bets video as well as the uh, breakdown of the Monday night slate. So I hope you guys enjoyed. And I'll catch you guys then. Peace out.